The sky begins to change into dusk as the sun is already setting. The, the last embers of the fire crackle and pop. You could probably feed it to keep it going, or you might choose to let it go out. Spengali hasn't invited you inside his partially capsized uh, wagon, but it and uh, the small campsite that he has made will offer some meager protection from the elements at the very least. He's also obviously been here for a few days, if not weeks, and you would therefore assume that this is a place of relative safety. As the night begins to come in, what are what is your plan? Um, Lazarus would say he and his retainers could keep an eye out while the other two slept. Um, if we've traveled before, you would know Lazarus doesn't sleep, it seems. I'd like to think that because of some of this um, familiarity that Lazarus doesn't actually have to say anything. Like he just like sits and in a place where he can like see the entirety of the campsite and silently that's the acknowledgement. Like, you know, I'll be watching if you want to rest. And guys is not uh, very happy with this arrangement. Before Rhea is even starting to like undress her armor, Gaius is like got his you know bed roll out. He's got like a blanket over it. He's he's just lounging there, ready to go to bed. Uh, what are the names of your retainers, Lazarus? Uh, Lucius, Mordecai, and Callista. Uh, and what were they in life? Uh, Lucius was the major domo of our estate. Mordecai was a chef, and Callista was a maid. Okay, you said Lucius was the uh, the major domo. Yes. What's he like? Uh, I imagine he's very solemn. I imagine he was with the family for a very long time and felt very um, what's it called? Uh, felt very responsible for everything that happened within the estate both okay. good and bad uh and what was your family's name again um melanthios melanthios as the others are beginning mm -hmm. uh to get make themselves comfortable uh their nighttime rituals uh lucius will partially materialize to you uh, your retainers have the ability to, like, make themselves visible, not only to you, but only to those who can, like, who have some of that spiritual touch. Mm -hmm. And uh, as his, like, ghostly, uh, pale face begins to uh, appear, he, uh, he looks at you, and he kind of clears his throat and uh, says... <clears throat> Master Melanthios, if you wouldn't be too much, I beg your pardon to speak for a moment. Please continue. What? What's what's going on? Normally, I wouldn't disturb your business uh, with uh, without first being called or asked. But I felt that it perhaps would be prudent of me uh, 
that I alert you to something rather disturbing that I have felt. Please, uh, continue. What, what exactly are you referring to? Well, I, I can't say that I'm nearly as distinguished or, or well-read as you in the matters of spectral affairs, but I do remember what it felt like on that day when you were returned uh, to the material world. Ever since then, you've been the strongest sense of disturbance, necromancy, that I've been aware of. Since we've came here, there's been something else that's felt like it's lurking nearby. I can't say much more than that. Uh, there's no real sense of direction. Uh, it's like, it's like it's in the atmosphere, like the wind has changed. But I couldn't hold my tongue any longer. I, I hope you'll forgive me for speaking out of turn. You may always speak, especially when you feel strongly. When you say here, you're referring to this camp? Crossing the river? Before Crossing that? the river in particular. As I said, I have tried to concentrate and locate some kind of directionality to it, but it was as if crossing the river had us cross a, some threshold. I see. Well, I will let the others know in the morning to, we should keep our eyes peeled for any sort of undead entity that may be lurking about. Yes, quite smart, Master Melanthios. So, uh, f I'll tell the, uh, the others uh, of that particular uh, request. Oh, uh, close. Am I, am I dismissed, uh, Master Melanthios? Yes, just keep an eye out tonight. And make sure the fire stays stoked if you can. And that should be all. We're, we're fairly well taken care of. He'll nod. Uh, what was the name of your maid? Callista. Callista. I've sent Callista to fetch some firewood. Uh, don't worry, I'll make sure that we stay warm. Or, I guess, the others stay warm. He says as he chuckles a little bit to himself, beginning to dematerialize. How close is Lazarus to the uh, others during this? Mm. Close enough to hear? You at least? Probably, yeah. I don't, I don't think he like went off. It sounds more interesting to me if you can hear them rather than not. <laughs> yeah. I guess the question, uh, second question, can we see or hear them, the retainers? Or can only I you? See, I don't see why not. Uh, that specific interaction was just between Lazarus and um, Lucius. Okay. He, he only partially materialized. But like they're not always invisible or uh, unseen hmm. uh, to, to you. Uh, please, Lazarus, I'm trying to sleep. Could you speak with your invisible servants later? No, because I had very important information to share, but I'll tell you in the morning, since you're so tired. Oh, it's been such a tough day. Thank you, Lazarus. Uh, Lazarus, do you want to make a perception check for me? Sure, I'm really, really good at those. <laughs> Um, oh, fuck, I was being facetious. I guess I am pretty good at those. Oh, yeah, you were being facetious. <laughs> I, I thought I wasn't. I thought I built this character differently. <laughs> okay. 
so, um, Lazarus, how do you stay alert during the night? Like, what, what kind of things are you looking out for? Uh, I imagine he's he's looking out to see if I forgot his name, but that lovely, lovely acrobat to see Fingali. if yeah to see if Fingali's trying to like sneak away or do anything weird. He's trying to keep kind of an eye out for any odd feelings, like you know, similar to like uh, what Lucius described, anything that might be supernatural, or even just you know like shit moving around in the brush like maybe those those creatures came back gotcha so you're being hyper aware of your immediate surroundings yes cool then tell me how you come to learn that there is a creeping fog and cold uh like spot yeah a cold spot that is beginning to encroach upon the camp um i think he comes to learn of it because he's being hyper vigilant and he gets again somewhere like that chill on the back of his neck and then you feel cold that's a great question um it's up to you like, and you could still get the chill, but it might be because, like, you put your hand on the back of your neck and, like, you suddenly realize that there's, like, a little bit of frost there or something, like. I'm going to say he doesn't feel cold, because um, okay. that's more fun. But, yeah, and he'll he'll just turn around and see that and begin kind of hearing the spirits whisper in the back of his mind um, before, you know, going to the others and, and you know, uh waking them up to alert them that seems as though something is coming it's not very loud but you manage to catch the voices again difficult to tell exactly their source um what's it called uh but the, uh, just at the but just at the edge of your hearing, uh, maybe even you can't hear it themselves yourself completely. But the the whispers of the spirits maybe is like um, supplementing uh, the little bits that you, you you're not quite in earshot for. You hear voices saying this: "Ain't it curdled? All of it spoiled." Fear not. Though its breath a shuddering and of a quavering step to salvage, there are a few heartbeats left. If it's form, so I might give it function. And I'll twist what we've made, what we've maimed, into a monster. Oh God! Does it seem like they're coming from far away, like in the woods? Yeah, yeah, they're like at the very, like the very edge of your hearing like it's a, a little bit garbled but like you're able to kind of piece it together you roll really well your perception check but like it while you cannot tell the direction very well you can tell that it sounds quite quite far away it's almost out of earshot no they said heartbeats yeah so he he just wakes the uh, you know begins waking them up going I believe those creatures from earlier might have returned, or creatures who are of a similar species that are rhyming. Talking about heartbeats, I think it's best we wake up. Uh, two more hours. Um, um, is, is the fog still approaching, by the way? Yeah, definitely. Okay. As as I finish just waking up, uh, like Rose, um, I I'm going to 
um, cast Sea Invisibility on myself. Oh, cool. Uh, at the at the word in her ear, uh, the rose immediately rises from her slumber. Uh, whatever sentiment of sleep that she had, uh, she discards. Uh, she begins to pull on her armor, and I haven't mentioned this, but she does have a retainer, like someone who like watches over her riding stallion. Um, and she calls him over and starts to have him uh, like help her dress back into her mail. Okay. How long does that take you, do you know? I believe it takes me five minutes. Okay. You should have time to do that then before anything transpires. And Gaius will reluctantly arise, kind of making a big show as he stands, you know, gets on his knees, and uses a tree to get help himself up, and stretches his back. <sighs> it's better. These things show back up. We better kill them this time. My lord Lazarus, where's the threat? Do I see anything? If I look into the fog yeah. or the edges with... Okay. Your, what does what your invisibility sight look like to you? Uh, what I imagine it looks like... Um, like, to everyone else, is like his, his eyes just glow. Like, this, like, spectrally green-white um, kind of thing. And, like, almost shining like out Like, wide light beams? A like... Yeah. Um, so, same if he ever casts light on himself. It just kind of, like, comes out his eyes and mouth. But what it looks like to him is, yeah, seeing everything in, like, this really wispy, greenish uh, lens of the world. Being able to okay. see both in the ethereal plane and in this plane. The thing you see are the spirits that normally accompany you. What you see in the fog is that occasionally the shape of the fog takes the shape of these big round eyes and they begin to look over you. And then these long kind of tenderly fingers reach out and kind of like wash their hands over your party. Or just the general area, not specifically always at your party, but just like reaching and cloying at the the uh, the campsite. Uh, roll me an Arcana check, uh, Lazarus. Okay. Damn. Tonight is your night. Yeah, until I die. <laughs> um, Lazarus, you know very. Oh no, no, no. no. I'll... Again, I like to do it this way. I just need to remind myself because of all the years that I was doing it in the inverse. Lazarus, tell me how you learned about uh, the presence of like scrying uh, eyes and, and things like that. You know that this is not like the spell scrying, but you know that there is like a clairvoyance. That is, looking upon you, sensing you from a remote location via the fog. Um, how did I learn of that in general, or how do I learn of it in this moment? Yeah, up to you. Okay. I'm going to say how he learned of it in general was given his background and kind of keeping his abilities under wraps. Um, his His mother taught him all about the different kinds of scrying magics that nobles may have used on each other to find paltry secrets or something salacious, but that for him and her it would be it'd be a deadly um, experience. So they were oh always right yeah 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 to avoid yeah, anything yeah, yeah. like that. That's very cool. I like that a lot. You can have inspiration. Oh, thank you. Um, so yeah, just recognizing that and recognizing it's from some sort of supernatural source, he'll, you know, say that some sort of entity, I don't know whether it's these creatures or perhaps these creatures' master, is watching us through the fog, watching this area. Oh, so they know they've interrupted our beauty sleep. But the thing is, I didn't mention it. You guys were getting ready for sleep. Lucius mentioned that this entire area 
is infused with some sort of strong necromantic energy. He, he believes there's some sort of strong necromantic entity or energy in this place. Perhaps it's the leader of those creatures. Perhaps those creatures are it. I, I don't know. But I also heard them in the woods. Will Lucius be able to tell whenever we have left this energy field? Yes, he, he, he would. He said it got very strong when we crossed the river. Everyone get up, pack camp. We're leaving. Do you think we should tell the, 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 the acrobat? We have conversed with him as much as he wishes to be conversed with. He has no more to tell us and no more that we need tell him. But if someone is spying on us, they fear us, they may attack us. We need to leave. That sounds reasonable. Depending on the level of this magic, it might just watch over this area or it might follow us. I'll, I'll let you know which. We should be wary. Anyone... The acrobat has mentioned a cult here within the town that we are about to arrive in. If they are... If they are the forces I suspect them to be. We need not give them more claim to us than they should have. As you guys begin uh, to pack up uh, you will notice that the horse that was um, afflicted um, with the in in the encounter with the beasts has begun to spasm and seizure. Oh. Uh, I'm gonna rush over and try to uh, see if I can see if this is like a natural ailment of some kind. Maybe roll like animal handling. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, uh, your choice of animal handling, uh, nature, or medicine. I'm gonna take animal handling. Uh, this does not seem natural. This is not, like, a behavior of the, of the horse. Um, it, it might be some kind of strange illness... Maybe, but it seems very odd. The the pallor of the horse's skin has changed. Like you know what horses look like, how they act. You know, even even when they are unwell, and the way that this thing is behaving, the jerkiness to its movements, the way that it's breathing in these like very shallow uh, yet staccato kind of <laughs> uh, makes you. Almost sure that this is nothing normal. Yeah, um, no. Um, Lazarus turns to you and says, "Kill it. Kill it, or fix it with holy magic. They're turning it into a monster." Yeah, uh, the the Iron Rose is already ahead of you. She's already drawn her dagger. I don't know whose horse we've decided this is, but it doesn't matter. Let's just say it's mine. We'll just okay. say it's mine. Um. Iron Rose, like, before you've even said the words, like, a, a dagger comes out of her, uh, like, the sheath on her hip that she uses usually to stab into the armpits of armored enemies and just slits its throat. All right. Uh, yeah, your, your hand, uh, like, goes under and, uh, fresh, hot blood is spilled, uh, across the earth. Um, huh. as, uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, guys. Uh, such a shame. That was a Montaguean horse. The, uh, you know, best horse breeds around. Not many left after the Montagues are all dead now. Uh, never mind. I'd rather lose a stud than gain a monster. 
I mean, you've got magic hands. You could have saved it. I guess it doesn't matter now. It's, you know, dead. Does it look like it's going to stay dead? Lazar's just going to, like, try to observe it. Yeah, as your eyes are cast over it with your ethereal sight, you don't see, like, a lingering spirit. Uh, it is completely inert uh, upon the ethereal plane. Okay. Uh, as, as the blood seeps into the earth, the fog begins to move as if suddenly uh, disturbed by some great wind that you don't feel. Does it, does it rapidly retreat? Yes. Oh, okay. Is it... Uh... Going in any particular direction? No, it's receding, like, backwards. I mean, did it come from, like, a westward direction that was going east, or is it just every, retreat, retreating nope. everywhere? No, it was seeping in from all directions, and now it's retreating. Okay, okay. I think we foiled that plan... One of them is talking about how it was curdled and spoiled. Perhaps, for some reason, they don't like its blood. Do you think it would be wise to try to collect some vials of it, just in case? Do you think the things that attacked it earlier poisoned its blood? I don't know. Maybe they're... Obviously, they came back to try to enact some sort of ritual or magic in order to, as they said, twist it into a monster. Maybe they can infect creatures with their with their bites and their claws, and maybe if they don't finish a creature, it deters them in some way. Or maybe they're just leaving because they realized, oh, we can't change it into a monster anymore. I don't, I don't entirely know. The fog bank begins to stop moving. And rather than being low towards the ground, it begins to drift up high like these misty walls. These guys are fucking assholes. Uh, Gaius will toss a rock out of the fog just to see if it goes through it does uh, Alex you are hit in the head by a rock <laughs> do I like do I hear people around or am I just It's you have been running through a, a fog bank so yes, mm -hmm. you've heard them, but you, it's been so hard to tell like if you're getting closer or not, or like what's going on. This is the first sign, the like tangible sign that you are uh, even remotely close to the sound, the source of the sound. Who goes there? Ah, uh, there. And guys, points at where you threw the rock. Who goes? Who goes there? Who, who are you? Corridor. Corridor. Are you in who? trouble? There's this place is unsafe. Well, well, kind of the fog. I know that we've got. Uh, it will we'll kill you if you're not if if you're you know dangerous. I'll kill you if you're dangerous. 
How about okay. everyone walking out? kills each other? Uh, I guess as he steps out, you guys will see a uh, kind of a younger half orc man um, stands at a little over six foot. You see, the uh, most prominent feature is you see he's got a wolf pet, wolf pelt, excuse me, um, coming down from his head, kind of draping over his back. Oh, oh my God! You're you're half orc. I'm so sorry. I said I'd kill you. Uh, we're not supposed to say those sort of things anymore. I'm, I, I apologize. Uh, I, I promise not to kill you. I'll accept that promise. It's a, uh, it's strange times. Well, what are you, what are you doing out in the woods? I was told there was a disturbance and there was someone out here that needed my help and so oh. i ran well we are being hunted by a trio of undead entities that are trying to kill us and i presume eat us so there is that if you'd like to help should we get going then do you Really want to stick around? Huh? Well, they've created a fog bank, and we don't know where the fuck they are. I don't know if it's wise to wander out into the fog. I just did. and Didn't have an issue. Well, how far is there I more fog? I wandered in, anyway. Well, how far does the fog extend? Uh, how far did I walk through the fog? Uh... Like, you know, it wasn't, like, miles or anything like that, but it's probably a few hundred feet. Five, ten minutes. You'll get through it. It's not that long. Well, that's five to ten minutes of being ambushed in fog. Run fast. <laughs> Run fast, he says. We couldn't even see where we're running. I mean, you look... Well, you did it, obviously. But, you know. So there's fog. It's hard to see. I can carry you if you like. Really? Well, I wouldn't say no. Ray, what do you think our survival odds of us wandering into the fog? Do you think that's safer than staying here? Safer than a place that we know the enemy knows? No. We should go. Okay. Then I think pack up camp and... Let's all go together and make haste. Hang, hang on. He'll go up to each of you and be like, Put out his hand. I, I'm, I'm Corridor. And, and you are? Lazarus. Pleasure. Gaius Calrez. Good to meet you. Uh, Rhea does not offer her hand. Uh, Rhea Bellevere de Son of House Gal Meridian. Can I call you Rhea? You may. Perfect. Well, it's a pleasure. Oh, need any hands? Packing up? Uh, Rhea will go into, like, a military march sort of order, like, you know, very, very direct, like, you know, do this, do that, like, pick these things up, put them in that pack, uh, put them on that horse, um, she, like, goes into a, like, it's very, like, it, it's something that she's done so many times that there is, like, a very specific order to it. He, he tries, but then, like, after, like, the first trip, he just starts shoving anything he can in any pack. She doesn't lambast you for it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, every time that you kind of, like, fail and, like, you drop one pack, like, she, like, points to her squire, Remington, and, like, just, like, nods, and he comes over and sort of, like, does it the way that she said before. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, while you guys are 
packing up, you'll notice that the horse's body is gone. I fucking hate these people. <laughs> Maybe that'll satisfy them. Wishful Doubt. thinking, maybe, but still. Doubtful. They didn't have nice things to say about it. Um, oh. While we were packing up, um, would it have taken like 10 minutes, John? Sure, yeah, if there's something okay. you'd like to do. I would have liked to ritually cast uh, Unseen Servant. Okay, yep. And just have that ready for when we are when we are entering the fog. And basically, he's just going to have it kind of like be off to the side as potentially a distraction if they're going to attack another moving force through the fog. Okay. Do you want it to be continually doing that as you progress forward or just like on the ready? Uh, continually doing that once we enter the fog. Okay. And progress through it, yeah. 